same things over and over again? Do I click the same buttons and the same sequence when I do a setup? Am I fixing the same problem day in and day out? That I have to log into this screen, go to this button, go to this screen, go to this button, type this field, go to cache clear, yada yada. Yeah, of course we all do. That's, if you're maintaining the site at all, if you're building sites at all, you do the same things over and over and over again. And it's time to let the robots do that. Human beings are really prone to errors. We are great at making mistakes when we do repeatable, boring processes. So anything you can make a machine do, it's time to make it do it. Not just because they're good at flipping pancakes, but because they can do really intricate, hard to do things. And once you got them set up to do it once, Pancake bot here can make a pancake all day as long as you keep refilling that batter. And you make the same dinosaur every time. I couldn't make this dinosaur if you paid me hundred dollars. Just couldn't do it. A thousand under my wanted to do it. But I couldn't do it all day. Couldn't do it reliably all day. And that's what machines are really good at. If you can tell them what to do, they can do good stuff. So let me show you a quick example. Speaking of Cloud9, I'm actually using that. I know that's the wrong logo, uh, but it's a joke. So don't, don't attack me for using the wrong logo for <laughs> um, That's the gaming company. Uh, so let's go watch a really quick example. This is all real time. Uh, I've never sped this thing up. Oh, hopefully you'll be able to see all of this. I don't want to speak um, But this is real. So right now I just have a blank Apache environment. There's all my files. That's a PHP environment. It should look familiar. And I'm going to script that I built. I'm going to go ahead and run. One of the reasons I like Cloud9 is that I'm doing special to run it. Don't worry about the MySQL thing, that's specific to Cloud9. Uh, it's going to do some stuff. I noticed all the files that appeared, that was the download of core. Um, somewhere along the line, I also configured it. I built my config, uh, PHP. Uh, I did a few other things, and I go back to that exact same Apache server, and that fast, I have a kind of ugly theme, but a beautiful site um, with a bunch of dummy posts in it. Some using more of some, some just posts. Uh, yeah, it's a little fun little widget I made over the corner with the CIA uh, list of emojis. Just picks one of those random. You can change the description. It's not just on the website. This is your CLI. And I put a little quick link to Google because it's a demo site. Why not end on Google? And I bet somebody in this room, at least, is thinking, what was that? What just happened? I saw a minute and 15 second video of building a website. What the heck was that? Let's take a step back before we talk about the internals. Who here uses a terminal or a command prompt every day or later? Yeah? Before there was the command, before there was the GUI, before we had click and point and Apple introduced us, and Xerox invented it, and Apple productized it, we had a command line. I still use gray and black, because I think it's a great combo. Uh, gray and black. Um, and by means line by line, I can go tell a computer to do a thing. I just happen to have um, this up. So you can do fun things like uh, a curl party parrot. Well, that's terrible. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I have to kill out of that. Uh, or check the weather. I can hit the weather underground's uh, um, server, which looks terrible. Sorry, this is just so the party parrot messes this up. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stop it at just the right second. Uh, but yeah, you guys have it at just the right one. But I, uh, I can hit the weather underground's telnet server and find out where the weather is, if it's working. They don't have this as the highest priority over there, uh, surprisingly. So, oh no, SFO doesn't have the data. And, all right, not a big deal because it's just a demo. But you can all sorts of fun things in the command line, just from a fun, I'm using a command line. But when it gets super powerful is that line by line you can tell a computer to do, you can start stacking those commands. That's called scripting. Who of you here have ever written a script? For everyone that didn't put their hands up, it's super easy to do. A script is no different than Shakespeare or NCIS Miami. It's a line of things that do this repeatedly. You can get Othello or Romeo and Juliet and do it line by line the way it was written. We will have performed that play. Same thing. Robot, do this set of things in order. That brings us to WPCLI. WordPress command line interface is written in PHP. It's an open source bucket of tools for managing WordPress. Uh, you can go contribute to it right now. You can jump out to github.com slash wpcli slash wpcli. Uh, 
or go to wpcli.org and get there from there. A lot of people wrote this. Uh, Christy and Andrea over there on the end invented it. Uh, Daniel is currently a chief maintainer. Um, Alan Arlane has been um, working with it quite a bit in the last year. It got rolled into the WordPress project in January of last year. So this is officially WordPress. You're not using some third-party tool that someone dreamed of and hoped it worked for the project. This is the project itself. Yep. Their website is still its own independent landing page. When you click any of the links, they go over to WordPress.org. So if you're playing along at home, this is the time when you go to WPCLI.org and you can start playing along with me. We're going through the next section pretty quick, but how do we do this? First, we've got to install the darn thing. While it is part of the project, you're going to use this tool on a server or locally, and you need to say, hey, I'm going to turn it on, make it work. So how do you do that? It needs a few things. Sorry, Windows users, you're going to need Bash. I say sorry because you're going to have to install something or configure your machine to use Bash. Use, uh, Windows 10 Professional Edition users, it's there. Bash and Ubuntu on Windows is a real thing. You can turn it on right now. Take a couple of restarts, but you can do it. Uh, or you can just install git bash, and it works. Uh, you're going to need SSH access if you're going to put this on a remote server. And you're going to need PHP 5.3 or later, but who here is not on 7 yet? Okay. Well, well not on everything. Not everything. All right, we'll be getting there. You're working on it. Because uh, you should go on 7 at least. Uh, 7.2 right now, and 7.3 is coming. Um, so how are you doing this? Three steps. That's it. That's all you need to do. Is there anybody in the room that's like, what the heck does that mean? Anybody? <laughs> that's all right. I see a couple blank faces. Curl just means go over a URL and pull the information I am requesting. Tap below says name it the thing that it's named there when you pull it over. So let's pull this far file. A far file is, let's say like a jar file, but nobody knows what that means either. So uh, <laughs> it, it's a prepackaged set of executable PHP code in a bucket they call a far. So then we're going to shmod it to say, hey, this is executable on my system, chmod, whatever you pronounce it. Uh, and then we're going to move it somewhere useful. So when I type WP, I get this. I get a beautiful list of commands that it can do. Ever growing, ever expanding. So this is what it looks like when you actually go through this process. All of my slides are available online. I'm not going to follow the slides verbatim today because uh, I have a shorter amount of time and I want to demo some other cool stuff. But uh, if you want to say, like, what does this look like when it works properly, they're in the slides. Go feel free to use them and leverage them. Uh, and there's, oh, uh, now you go. Um, so that's it. Once you've gotten through that, the hard part's over. A couple caveats. If you're going to put this on a remote server, that's got to be a remote server you can access and actually install things on. Shared boxes, sorry. Um, you might get lucky and there might be some kind of bash through cPanel that you can access, but actually hitting the right site or requiring a remote at it, and now we're getting complicated. Uh, on VPSs, obviously it's easy, local installs, brilliant, uh, third parties, uh, Pantheon for instance, uh, it's just there, like you can just target the site on Pantheon through your command line interface. Um, but once you're up and running, you can do anything. But what's anything? The problem with saying you can do anything is that's a lot of stuff, and you have to figure out what you're doing. So what the rest of these slides go up through are basic usage of, of this thing. So if I'm going to uh, use any of this, I've got to know where the commands live. Fortunately, this command list is a living list. It's not a static doc that you're hoping gets updated after the product gets released and someone has a lot of uh, ambition to go do it, this command list is auto-generated from the tool itself. The way they built it is in the commands themselves, there's a header that has the help docs. The full set of help of commands in the help docs are in the tool already. Very amazing way to approach the situation. Um, so when you go to this command, you can get that same command by typing WP and seeing the command list pop up and start drilling into it. I learned how to use WPCLI on a plane. Not even kidding. When I fly, it was like, oh, I got my local up. Let's see what this thing can do. And dug through the docs completely offline. 
before we look at these commands, it's good to know like how these things are structured. So you're always going to type WP because you've got to tell the computer, I want to use the WPCLI. You give it a general command like theme, plugin, uh, user, general category. That's the first command. Then subcommand, what do you want to do with that thing? So even if you forget how exactly it's worded, if you can get as far as WP um, user, oh, add, but I don't know what to do. If you put that in the error screens, tell you, oh, I think you meant to do this. Or here's what you should probably do. Uh, command, the error screen is really nice. A few global parameters you can throw in. There's a whole bunch more, but uh, things like prompt. So if you don't remember at all what a thing does, or how to put the additional variables it requires, so if I'm doing uh, an install, I don't remember all those fields, but I can say dash dash prompt, it'll just tell me. It'll say, I need these 16 things, let's go through the list and use it, add them in as I ask them. Or if I run this command all the time and I just do not want my terminal cluttered with messages, I say quiet, just do a sign on. Those are global. Those are like every command will adhere to these things. Then there are specific command arguments that only work with that certain commands, like dry run. Dry run's awesome, and I use it a lot when I am using this on uh, in, in my work uh, in uh, demos. Because dry run will say, "What would happen if I actually ran it?" But it won't actually run it. It will say, "Here's the results, but I didn't do it. Just this is what it looks like." I'll come in and play a little later. So let's go through a few quick examples, and then I'm going to jump over and show you a few other things. So, one of the things I did was download the core. That's it. That's the entire process for downloading core. Now, admittedly, it is cached on um, C9 because they uh, also, you can just start up a WordPress site on C9 in a dev environment. Um, so it's there, so it's a little faster over the wire than pulling it from the repo, but we're talking a matter of a couple seconds faster. But this is it. Download all the necessary files from one command. Build a config. Who likes building config PHP? Or do we config files by hand? Yeah, nobody. Um, I don't either. <laughs> but core, uh, core config will build it for me. And I can say prompt, and it will ask for the specific things it absolutely needs. Now, C9, I can get away with just using my username and uh, database name, which are right there for you if you want to log in my account. Um, <laughs> So I can fill pre-fill in that information. And you know the five minute install, this is the 10 seconds. One of the more powerful features of, of this whole thing, how I found it, ooh, this looks terrible in this font. Hold on a second. Font looks good. Not font size, screen resolution. Screen resolution is what I was looking for, everybody. Screen resolution. Look better before I plugged it in. Alright. Here. Alright. Um, so I have everything I run today uh, is just out on GitHub. <coughs> this example script. You know, get to look at the raw so we can copy paste. Ooh. Um, so I want to download core, I want to configure it the way I want to configure it. Um, install it. Let's see how long this actually takes in real time. It even verifies the hash. And there we go. Uh, now on C9, so run project. Uh, <coughs> up here. I'm going to get this nice link to my demo site. And I have a beautiful broken site. Because I did something wrong. I did something wrong on purpose. There's no reason you have to use C9 in, incorrectly. Uh, <laughs> you can use it correctly. Um, is there's this ability that I, this is how I discovered the tool exists in the first place. To say, hey, WordPress command line interface, go through the whole site. So what, how I broke it, I had more time at demo how I broke it, um, is I called it the wrong thing. The full URL. Why is that not resolved? Oh, I see. Uh, the user, the uh, site name is like one, two, one, but it's actually for something slightly different. And that slightly difference is this versus that for all the images to load. So I can say, hey, the PCLI, there we go, bash. 
<coughs> go through and make these five replacements. You can see that in the back. Um, if I ran dry run on that, it would have said, I would make five replacements, but it wouldn't actually do it. That seems logical to me. On a brand new install, there'd only be a few assets. If it came back and said, I'm going to make 3,000 changes, <laughs> I would be scared. <laughs> if it came back and said, I'm going to make zero changes, I'd be like, oh, something's not right, because that's definitely a string I want to replace. So it's a quick way to just real quick test. And you just hit up arrow and take off dry run, and you're back to where, you're back to where you were. So when I did that, it went through the whole database and said, that URL, that string, not even the URL, but that string was wrong. Let's so does it, will it search any column in any table or what? Yeah, you can say um, dash dash all tables and it will go through everything. Um, and it is going through the database. If you want to do more specific, um, uh, it's explicit. I can't remember off the top of my head because I never use it. Uh, but you can say, hey, PHP replace everything. Everything you see, period. Just anything. And it doesn't, not just things at that meta level, it's like, hello world, I hate hello world, because we use it all the time. So, if I say, I don't run out of time, but something is cool. Hello. Is it case sensitive, or can you flag that? Let's case. find out. It's good <laughs> With, uh, hello, HP. <laughs> And I put a double quote instead of a single quote. Loved live demos, don't you? Oh, zero replacements made. But if I come back and say, hello world, I get a replacement. It's case sensitive. But can you pass like a dash my flag or something? <laughs> um, yeah, you can actually. Um, you can pass all sorts of parameters. How I know that is you can go about the command list because uh, this is actually the next point I was getting to. Um, so great question. Um, so the first two things I showed, I just like kind of whizzed through and hey, BBQ. Um, and yeah, I know those commands really well in the way that I use them. There are a bunch of commands and a bunch of subcommands. How many commands are there? I threw it in a spreadsheet. And there are that many, 42. Um, 42 general commands. There are a lot more subcommands. Inside of all those subcommands, so let's look at search replace. Do, do, do. Any, by the way, if you see anything like, I would love to improve that, or that doesn't read correctly, or that's, eh, maybe we could say that better. Open issue queues right there. Go to a pull request. Go in and contribute. Every, we need all hands on deck for contributing to this stuff. Um, so we can say old, new, table, dry run, network, all tables with prefix, all tables. I can, oh, this is a fun one. Um, I have that in the slide. I can say, hey, go through and make all of these changes, but don't do it in the current database. Do that in a database export at the same time. So when you're on your dev server and you need to push it over to live server and make all those path changes, because how does WordPress store its paths? Absolutely it does. Um, terrible joke. Uh, you can say, hey, just throw that in the new database, and I'll import that new database to production, and we're done. Not that I would say import or live production over at your database ever, but you could do it that way if you're just launching. Um, so again, what were we looking for, though? We were looking for skip columns, include columns, precise. Precise is what I was looking for for PHP instead of SQL. Um, looks like currently, no. You can do regex. So there you go. Um, but no, no uh, I flag right at the moment. It's a regex. Oh, well, there, there you go then. I guess, sorry, my mind's racing because I'm trying to get through everything in the next 10 minutes and open it up for questions. Um, so I'm not going to demo anything else live except for one other thing. Um, so if I want to generate posts, how do I generate those posts? Well, obviously you can just say, hey, generate me some posts. You can also do fun things like uh, pass in data to it. So I could curl from a lorem ipsum generator and say, hey, build me post out of this what you pulled in, what you curled in. Thank you. Um, so now I got to really speed up. Uh, so if you get a site and you're like, well, how many posts actually are there? What are, what are, what are these posts? What are their status? You are on a post list and just kick it out. You don't have to go through the admin screen. Because we're using, this is what I'm showing here, because we're using Bash, you have all of Bash at your disposal all the cool things Bash can do, like I can easily write to a file. Bash is really good at that. 
So you can say, hey, I want to put this in export or format equals CSV, and I can dump this into a CSV right now, and I can see all my posts. In this use case, or this example, maybe not that useful, in a site with thousands of posts, oh, absolutely easy way to do it. I want to delete those posts, post IDs, I can delete them all at the same time. And again, I'm going to let you go find these slides and see this if you want to dig in and uh, see this in action. But if I want my um, post delete, one, two, and three, I can do multiple posts at the same time. Bam, those are gone. I go back and look, and sure enough, they are gone. All right, users. Who likes creating users through the dashboard? Some people do. Um, uh, you could just throw up your terminal and get it done in one line. Uh, or if you don't remember that one line to create, you could throw a prompt and it'd say, hey, remind me what I'm supposed to put in here. Oh, I need 10 things. I can optionally put 10 things, actually. If it's in angular brackets, it's required. Square brackets, it's optional. Notice password's actually optional. Don't worry, you get a password but it generates it for you. I want a preferred method. So here I'm making Daniel an admin or an author, and there's his password. Um, it's probably not great that I saw that. That's another good use of silent. So I'm gonna do that silently. I don't know what your password is. Um, you can go reset that yourself. User get, uh, I made Daniel something, but I don't remember what I made Daniel. Um, oh yeah, I can just use your get him. Now I see all the stuff, all his information. Delete, obviously you can delete. One of the cooler things you can do, without plugins, you can start modifying and playing around capabilities and roles. Uh, so if I say authors should not be able to delete their own posts, only editors should be able to do that, I can go into author and take that capability out. I can add roles to people, so I can say you're an editor and an, and a, um, editor and an author, and you get the both of those worlds and start stacking things, or I can come in with capability. Actually, I don't think I have that on the slide. but. Um, Say, I want to cap add a capability to a role. Or I want to create a brand new role. You can start using workflows without plugins, the proper WP way to do it without a lot of muster fuss. Of course, you can delete people. That makes total sense. Themes. I can see what themes are there and what's active, and very importantly, what's up to date. If it needs to update all, well, you should probably delete the ones you're not using, quite honestly unless you swap between, swap between themes a whole lot, and then that's super easy. Downloading them is super easy. It's theme install, and you name the theme. If it exists in the repo, it finds it. Do you, are you limited to just the repo? No. If you give it a full path to a theme, no matter where it is, it, can find, or it will get off that path. So if you wrote your own theme, threw it on GitHub Bitbucket, point it at it, grab it, you're good to go. Activating, another command. You can also combine theme and install, or activate and install to be one thing. So I can install and activate with one word. One of the coolest features, and the thing they're expanding a lot, is scaffold. Who here uses child themes every time, no exceptions? I see some waving hands too, like, eh, I don't know, maybe. Um, great idea, because you know what? You can accidentally blow up your child theme all you want, and it defaults to the parent theme of behavior, and you're good, and nobody's mad at you. Well, they're mad, but they're not that mad. Um, this is how you create a child theme with WPCLI. You name the child theme, tell it what parent it's got, and you're done. You activate it at the same time, and you're working in that child theme. You're ready to go. You didn't have to install anything. You just pop open well, your ID, your PHP ID, and uh, get to work configuring that thing. Um, I'll come back to scaffolding in a minute. That's one of the last things I want to demo, and I know we're running out of time. Um, you delete themes, plugins, just like themes. I can install them, and uh, I can even install specific versions. So if I say, no, nah, I don't, do not want the latest, greatest Jetpack, I would like the 4.7 version, please. No problem. But if I can also update everything. So if I, like, yeah, that was a dumb idea to not get the latest, greatest Jetpack. It's available. Let me update Jetpack. Or I could say all. That's a scary thing to do on a production website.
installing for the break. Anyway, just for the sake of time, they just added scaffold block. So of all of you plugin developers who are like, how on earth am I going to start developing for Gutenberg? Scaffold block will put all the files in the right place, building. It doesn't do anything in those files yet. The early version is, this is like pre first release of it. In fact, it's not in the general release. You have to go install the scaffold edition that they've, they've just recently built uh, with Composer. So it's Composer scares you, maybe not for you just today. But it will insert the right things in the plugins so you can start building <coughs> right now. Uh, what about databases? It's scary. This is the last thing I'll, uh, a couple of things to talk about, but this is one of the last big ones. Um, what tables have I got in my database? I don't need, I don't need my SQL tools to figure that out. WBCLI will do it for me. Do I want to export a database? Yeah. If I had more time, I would show you the magic trick that uh, Sean Hooper, who gives the similar talk, always does, which is, let's export the database. Which isn't that scary. And then there's database reset, which is a terrible idea if you're not prepared for it. And it wipes the database, and you're back to zero. But you can also do database import. So you can database import right back where you left off. And he does it as a magic trick. And it's like, oh my god, the site disappeared. Now it's back. And it took three commands all together to make all of that happen. Uh, no special most of these tools, but yeah, sometimes you want to just get to the MySQL command line. Rarely, but sometimes you do. So yeah, WB, WP, DB, CLI, that's what it gets you, the MySQL command prompt. And then there's everything else you can do. If you want to arbitrarily execute PHP inside the environment, yeah, you can just get to shell. Not everybody lets you do this. Kind of thing that's locked down. Um, if you're working locally, of course, that's your machine, you can do whatever you want. But that's our arbitrarily running PHP code in shell. Hey, we've got this site ready for put the real content in. We've got to go through and manually delete all of these posts. No, we're site empty. Let's just get rid of everything. All the content's just gone. One button. Or all the, all the posts are just gone. One, one button. Um, Cron, who likes Cron? You're lying. Um, <laughs> you can start controlling it a lot better from the screen. All the commands are out on, um, on the repo. You can start using WP Slide within other tools. And once you start doing that, you can start doing interesting things like this is how I build demo sites. I don't save this file that often, honestly, anymore. But I will um, or save this version of it. But that's the only thing I change. That one variable. And then it creates a site on Pantheon. It installs the site using the credentials that I normally use for my demo sites. It's rid of the themes I don't want, <laughs> updates what's left, throws away the plugins I don't like, puts in WP CFM for the win, and activates it for me, and I'm ready to go. And I have a laundry list of other things it can do that I'm ready to uncomment and make it do on that particular run for that particular system. Can I start running that bash script on a computer I don't own? Yeah, it's called Circle CI or Travis or Jenkins. And now I can programmatically start talking to WordPress and have build tools and scripts do things for me. It also is tied into a lot of other CLIs and more and more that's growing. So if you're using other CLIs, but VCLI might be in there. Question time, we got time for one? <laughs> three questions. We can take three questions on full. I know that's really quick, and your heads are like, uh. <coughs> also extendability. If there's no questions, I'll say extendability. You can start writing your own plugins for the CLI itself. There's an awesome talk from WordCamp Seattle last year um, from, uh, I can't remember the name off the top of that, Creative. They built their own custom theme and their own plugin suite for CLI, WP CLI, a produce that puts mustache code in for certain things, and they change variables within that, they're passing parameters in, and every site's completely custom, working off a scaffold theme that's completely rock solid. So you can start doing all sorts of fun things once you start extending out the power of the CLI itself. So that was one question. Any others? Well, let's thank our speaker. <laughs> I stole that from Andrew Norcross. I'm never going to thank you.